Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this next example, what we gotta do is find out when is this function here, this piecewise function, discontinuous? At which points is it gonna be discontinuous? So this is gonna be a pretty intense question, lots going on here. As you could see, we're gonna be dealing with piecewise functions. We're obviously gonna be dealing with continuity, but we're also gonna be dealing with limits, one-sided limits, asymptotes, absolute values, as you can see. So. It's a pretty tough question, but what's great about it is it's going to review a lot of concepts that we've covered before. And so what I'm going to do with this function is I'm actually going to take the time to graph it first, just so you can visually see what's going on and you can see the process of how I break things down when I get something like this. And the way I'm going to graph this is I'm actually going to look at each of these pieces separately here. So I'm first going to start with this piece. 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 all over the absolute value of x plus 2. So how is this graph here going to look? Well, if you notice, first off, we can actually factor the numerator. The numerator factors into 2x plus 1, x plus 2. And this is going to be all over the absolute value of x plus 2. Now notice that hopefully you could see that this function is discontinuous at an x value of negative two, right? Because the denominator is gonna be zero at this x value of negative two. And notice that negative two falls within this range here of this overall function. And so we know for sure that this function is gonna be discontinuous at an x value of negative two. Now let's say that this function was discontinuous at an x value of positive two. Well then it really wouldn't matter for this overall function because it's, this function is only defined for x values less than negative one. So if it was discontinuous at positive two, it wouldn't be part of this piecewise function. But the fact that negative two is within this interval and this function is discontinuous at x equals negative two, we know that this function is gonna be discontinuous at an x value negative two. So that's the first thing I want to point out, but let's get into a little bit more detail here. Now, an absolute value of x plus two, just to review absolute value, we can change that to a piecewise function. So it's going to be positive x plus two when that x plus two is greater than zero. But if it's less than zero, we got to multiply by a negative one if this x plus two is going to be less than zero. Right? And notice that x plus 2 can't be 0 in this case. It can for this function alone, but this function is part of this one. x plus 2 can't be 0 because then the denominator would be 0. So we don't even have to worry about that case. So notice here we can convert this to being x plus 2 when x is greater than negative 2. Right? If we isolate for this x here. Or it's going to be negative, let's keep it in brackets, x plus 2 when x is going to be less than negative two, like that. And so what we can do is we can sub in this piecewise function for this absolute value function. So we could take this function and we can actually convert it to two x plus one, x plus two, over this is gonna be x plus two when x is greater than negative two or it's going to be 2x plus 1 over x plus 2 times negative x plus 2 when x is less than negative 2 like that. And so what's going to happen here? Well, notice that this and this are going to cancel out, and then this and this are going to cancel out. And so what this function actually simplifies to is it's going to be just this line 2x plus 1 when x is greater than negative 2. And it's going to be the line, this negative we could bring up. Let's keep it in brackets for now. When x is um, less than negative 2, like that. Okay, so one more time, it's this line when x is greater than negative 2, and it's going to be this line here, negative bracket 2x plus 1. You could also distribute this negative, negative 2x minus 1, when x is less than negative 2. So this function 
is the exact same thing as that right there. And so what we can do is we can actually graph this. So let's, uh, let's start graphing it. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna erase this. We don't really need it. So if I graph this, notice at an x value, when x is greater than negative two, it's this line here. So what's this value gonna be at an x value of negative two? Well, if we plug in negative two here, two times negative two is negative four, plus one is negative three, which is gonna be down here. And it's a hole there because notice it's not defined at negative two. And then this function here, what is the value gonna be of this function at an x value negative two? Well, if we plug in negative two, we'll have two times negative two, negative four plus one, which is negative three, but then we have this negative in front. So it's actually gonna turn into positive three. So that's gonna be up there. And notice that this function has a positive slope, it has a positive two, so we know it's gonna look like this, something like that. And then this function, notice it has a negative slope. If we distribute this, this would end up being negative two x minus one. And so we know that this line here, for x values less than negative two, it's gonna have a negative slope, so it's gonna look like this, right? Now this is not to scale necessarily. I know this should be probably a little bit more slanted because it has to go through negative one here. Uh, but I'm just kind of visually showing you what is happening. So not necessarily to scale, but in general, that's how this function is going to look around that x value of negative two. And notice it's not defined at that x value negative two. There's a hole here and then there's a hole right there as well. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is, so we took care of this function, but remember we're dealing with this overall function f of x. And so notice that this piecewise function f of x is gonna be defined by this function here that I just graphed, but for x values less than negative one. Okay, so x values less than, where's negative one? Negative one is here, right? So notice that this line's gonna continue, but all the way to negative one, right? And if we plug in negative one into this, or we could plug in negative one into this because this is the same as this, and negative one is when x is greater than negative two. So if we plug in negative one here, two times negative one, is negative two plus one is negative one. So at an x value negative one, this line here, two x plus one, is gonna have a y value of negative one. But that is gonna be a whole because it's not defined at negative one. Right, so hopefully you're keeping up here. I know there's a lot going on. Um, so this whole piecewise function is defined by this for x values less than negative one which is basically all of this here, but then there's a hole here because it's not defined at negative one. So basically, we just figured out this piece. We're done with this piece, and now we can move on to this piece, one over x. Now, one over x, it's not as complex as this function. One over x, we just know simply looks like what? It looks like this, right? The parent reciprocal function. But notice that one over x is defined from negative one, from an x value negative one to an x value of positive two. So an x value negative one is like here, <clears throat> an x value of positive two is like over here, right? So it's really gonna be defined from here all the way to here. Notice it's inclusive of those as well. So these are gonna be solid dots. So we can actually erase this part and then we can erase that part there. So taking this here, onto our main graph, notice that at an x value of negative one, what's the y value gonna be of one over x? Well, one over negative one is just gonna be negative one. And notice that that's the exact same point as over here. And so drawing this piece here, it's gonna look like that. It's just gonna, like if we kept on drawing one over x, it would look like this. Right, but it's not defined for x values less than negative one. So that part looks like this. 
And then this part here is going to look like that. But it's only going to go up to an x value of 2. It's only defined up to 2. So it's going to stop right here. And what's the y value going to be at this point here? Well, the y value, if we plug in 2 for x, is going to be 1 half. So it's going to be 1 over 2 over here, this y value. Maybe let's write it over here. Like that. All right, so, so far we've dealt with this piece and this piece over here. So x value is less than negative 1, it's this function. And then between negative 1 and positive 2, it's the reciprocal function right here. And this keeps going on forever. And so notice we can tell right away that the overall function f of x is actually discontinuous at an x value of 0. Because there's that vertical asymptote for 1 over x, and 1 over x is between uh, defined between negative 1 and 2, and 0 falls within that interval. So it's actually going to be discontinuous at x equals 0 as well. And then notice that it's not discontinuous at negative 1. I wanted to make a point there as well. It's continuous there because the y values of these two functions at that meeting point is going to be the same. Right? But you got to be careful with this function because it is discontinuous at negative 2, which would make this whole function discontinuous at negative 2. That's one of the tricks of the question, is dealing with this and realizing that that discontinu uh, discontinuity at negative 2 is within that interval. All right, so we dealt with those pieces, and now we have this piece left here. We got the absolute value of x minus 2 over 2 minus x. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm first going to take this absolute value of x minus 2, and like I did with this x plus 2, I'm going to convert this to a piecewise function. So we know if x minus 2 is greater than 0, then it stays as is. But if x minus 2 is less than 0, then we got to multiply that expression by a negative 1 to turn it to a positive. Uh, so simplifying this, we'll have x minus 2 when x is greater than 2, and negative x minus 2 when x is less than 2. And in this case, notice that we don't have to deal with an x value of 2 because this function at an x value of 2 is going to be undefined because notice that that denominator is going to be undefined. And so really we just have to work with these two cases. And more specifically actually, we just have to work with this case, right? Because this whole function is going to be defined for x values greater than 2. So we're not even going to be using this. But let's, uh, let's continue to work with the whole function and see what happens. So I'm going to write out this x minus 2, the absolute value of x minus 2. And then we have the 2 minus x. Notice that we could put it in that same format as x minus 2 if we factor out a negative. Right, so 2 minus x is the same as negative bracket x minus 2. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this to a piecewise function, knowing that this is equal to that at those intervals. So it's going to be x minus 2 over negative x minus 2 when x is greater than 2. Notice that that denominator is staying the same. What's going to be changing is the numerator depending on those intervals. And then it's going to be negative x minus 2 when x is less than 2. And then that denominator is still going to stay the same. So notice that this and this cancel out, we're left with a negative 1 at the bottom. Notice the negatives cancel out here, and so this would be a positive one. So we would end up having negative 1 when x is greater than 2, and then it's going to be positive 1 when x is less than 2, like that. So this function, or this function, is equal to this piecewise function. And notice at an x value 2, we don't have to include that. It's undefined at an x value of 2. And so the way that this function looks, if you were to graph it, it's going to be negative 1 when x is greater than 2. So at 2, it's going to be negative 1. It's just going to be a constant. It's just a horizontal line. It's going to be positive 1 when x is less than 2. Horizontal line, like that.
that's how, if you take this function and graph it, that's how it's going to look right here. And then add an x value too, notice it's undefined. Both of these have holes right there. But going back to the piecewise function we're working with, remember we're not just working with this function, we're working with the whole piecewise function. The, this function represents the piecewise function only when x is greater than 2. So as I mentioned here, we're only going to be working with this portion of the graph. And so if we take this portion and plug it into the overall graph of f of x, notice that at 2, it's going to have a y value of negative 1, and then it's just going to be a horizontal line like that. All right, so that there, oh, let's not uh, erase f of x. So that there ends up being your graph for f of x. All right, so as I mentioned, lots going on there, absolute values, one-sided limits, right? I'm graphing this, assuming that you've gone over all of those videos dealing with absolute value, one-sided limits, then we got parent functions, reciprocal functions, and then this function here, there's a discontinuity at negative two. So as I mentioned, lots going on. And so now that we have the graph though, we can comment, where is it discontinuous? Well, notice it's discontinuous at an X value of negative two. And then what's the reason? Like if they ask you what type of discontinuity, notice it's a jump discontinuity. So then we keep going, notice it's continuous at negative one, and then notice at an x value of zero, it's discontinuous as well because there's a vertical asymptote there, or it's an infinite discontinuity. And then we keep going, and then notice at an x value of two, it's also discontinuous. Notice it's gonna be another jump discontinuity. Right, so overall, this function f of x is discontinuous at three points, and I feel like these two points were the trickiest ones because that's when these actual functions were discontinuous, and their discontinuity was within the intervals of the overall piecewise function. And then just knowing that it's going to be continuous here. So, anyway, yeah, kind of a tricky question, kind of a long one as well, but those are the points where it's discontinuous.